So let's talk about the development of Indian civilization. The good news is, from doing that vocab matrix and doing that video yesterday, which I saw several of you completed, or at least I can tell that several of you completed, uh, you're going to be ready for this one. Okay, I'm just going to be good. All right, so the Inca Empire. All right, a couple of essential questions are going to guide us. No, they're the exact same ones that we've had for good reason. Okay. Does geography determine all of human behavior and civilization? Does you being born in Beach Grove mean that you are going to be in an awesome world history class? Yes, it does. And then second, what traits do civilizations share in common with each other? Right? We're comparing and contrasting. That's going to be our main objective. So that, that question makes sense. I look forward to your guys' uh, vocab pictures, by the way. Always makes me smile. This is geography determine everything that you do. Is having a Starbucks nearby mean that you go and buy more Starbucks? No. <coughs> Michael's like, yes, yes it does. I would agree with him. Yes, it, it, it influences the amount of pup cups that I get my dog. Now you can do that at Starbucks. Get your dog pup cups. Like whipped cream for your dog. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's super cute, too. Anyway. Alright, let's talk about the overview of the Inca. We're going big picture first. Okay? The dominance of Inca civilization comes at about 1100 to 1530 CE. But you're going to notice we're in a different location now. Okay, so if you see up here, here's the Aztec in purple, okay, kind of where Mexico was, right? The Maya on the Yucatan Peninsula we talked about, and the Inca are in South America. Okay, so we're in a new, new spot. Okay, their capital of their, of their empire was Cusco. Everybody say Cusco. Cusco. There you go. Another notable city which we're going to take a look at is Machu Picchu which is by far the most fun name to ever say in the entire world. Machu Picchu? Machu Picchu. Is that a combination of Macho Man and yeah. Pikachu? Yeah. Machu Picchu. Hey, hey, if that helps you remember it, John, whatever, man. All right, the Incan Empire. We are quoted that our warm-up was intentional when I was talking about roads. That's because the Inca Empire had 14,000 miles of roads. Okay, and 10 million people in it. It was a dynasty, they had a single ruler who was called Sapa Inca, which means, for them, emperor. You can draw me a wonderful picture of Rhodes under notes or something. Okay? Let's talk a little bit more how geography influenced the Incas. So, as some of you guys saw from your vocab matrix, the Andes Mountains are the, is the mountain range that runs uh, down the west side of South America. Okay, so you can see right here. All right, and there's a picture of it, what it looks like kind of from if you were standing. Okay, so you can see it's incredibly mountainous. So this puts demands on a couple of things. So if like you were, remember, remember when we looked at the Greeks? What did the Greeks really struggle to do because of geography? Unify. What was that, McKenna? Unify. unify, right? They really struggled to unify. So how the Incas get around it is by building roads. Okay? So, for example, like if the United States were incredibly mountainous, which in some parts of it it is, it's easier to unify because we have roads. But it does put also some really unique demands on agriculture. So some of you guys saw that kind of farming, just called terrace farming. There's a picture of it right there. Okay, they literally take like a, like a mountainside and they cut like Tetris into it. Do you guys know what Tetris is? Or am I really, really old? No. No, you said me do Okay, so you take a smooth mountainside, right? Like this. And what you do is you just cut into it like that. Because now what can you grow on top of it? Stuff. What? Like what? Crops. crops. Yeah, you can grow crops on it. Okay? And so that's, and that's how they get around. So the, so the geography gives them a lot of challenges, but they, they, the Inca Empire builds around it with roads and with terrace farming. Make sense? Nod your heads. Nod your heads. Does it make sense? Okay. Good, goody, goody, gun.
So let's talk about an example of Mayan achievement and kind of all those things with geography and um, just achieving those, you know, just gosh, the, the impossible, okay? This is Machu Picchu, okay? The pictures I'm showing you right here. Uh, Machu Picchu is built 8,000 feet above sea level. Really, really impressive. Okay, it's built on the top of a mountain, if you ever go there. It's really, really cool. So this is a long distance view. Okay, look at the road that they built to get up to it. Do you see it? Like snaking all the way back like that to get up to get up mountainsides. And then on top of it, it has 220 structures um, that, that dot its landscape. And there's a, and I'll show you here, a quick 3D tour you can take. You can do this on your own time. We won't dive too, too far into it. Um, but Machu Picchu is absolutely um, just utterly amazing in terms of like the, the architectural feat of it. Okay? So let's see here. So you can see how high up it is. Oh, hi, lady. Yeah, so uh, if you ever want to go and you can check out more about Machu Picchu, just the sheer like challenges of overcoming geography here are pretty are pretty awesome. Okay? Uh, again, not gonna dive too far into that because there's just there's so much cool stuff there. Okay? And they did follow the Inca practice of terrace farming as well in Machu Picchu. You can see that if you go over the YouTube. tour. Let's talk about religion and society, though. So that way we can compare it better to the Maya and the Inca. So the Sapa Inca, oh, what does that mean again? Oh, I didn't hear loud enough. Emperor. Mm -hmm. The emperor held absolute power, okay? He believed himself to be the son of the sun. If the son, like our son, had a baby, he would be that baby, okay? Uh, he is the empire's religious and military leader. He also manages Mita. We'll talk about it in a second. Locally, he had nobles who ruled for him. Okay, and we'll talk more about social structure here in a second. So, in Mita, citizens do labor for the empire periodically. Uh, I'm trying to think of a, of a good example of this. Um, hmm. Let's see. Do you guys have this slide in your notes? Yeah. You got it? Oh, look. Um, what do you talk with a shoulder person right now? Okay, here's, so Mita is citizens do labor for the Empire periodically. Everybody would be expected, about every six or seven years, they would go off and do labor. Uh, talk to the person next to you, and I expect that you talk. What do you think would happen if Mita was put in place in the United States? What would, it happen, what would happen if we did it today? Go for it. So Bryce, what do you think it happened? Mass revolts. Mass revolts? Yeah. Man, that's dark. Why? Anyone ever gonna want to do work for the U.S.? Nobody would want to do work for the U.S. Especially for free. Oh, so, oh uh, yeah. You don't get paid for it. That's true. Okay. Legal. What did uh, What did you What did you discuss with your your peers? We said that people would not want to uh, do free labor, so. Kind of like it's not. It's worse than jury duty. So they really oh, it's worse than jury duty. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You guys haven't had the haven't, haven't had that delicious. I thought you were gonna have to do yet. I want to do it. Would you guys say over here? Would you say what happened in the United States? We put a beat up. Shh. Right. Oh man, you guys are talking. Do you think it'd be a good thing? No. It would be over time. Yeah. Okay. Could be. 
Perhaps. There will be a war going on. Well, regardless about how you feel about it, the Incas, the Incas did put it in place. Mita was a requirement. And not only that, but nobody had personal property. Okay, so nobody had, you don't, you don't own an iPhone, you don't own a house, you don't own anything. There's no concept of personal property. Okay, so forget that, forget that uh, iPhone, iPhone 10 that you have. The government can't steal. You can. I guess you can steal, but it's, it's from the Inca government, which is probably a bad idea. Um, but records, actually, guys, were tracked on um, another cool thing. You, you will need to know this. So they didn't, the Inca Empire did not have writing. They had what are called kipu. Everybody say kipu. Kipu. By far the cutest word I would say. Okay. Uh, and it's not, it's not a string. And they, and they would be colored. So here's an actual picture of kipu that, that the Incas made. Um, so depending on the size of the knot, that accounted for a number. Okay, and they would keep records on them. And that was also in the John Green video that he talked about yesterday. Okay. Structure of Inca society. The only thing, uh, I just wanted to show you this, that they do have a hierarchy. So go ahead and write that down somewhere. Okay? That the Incas had a social hierarchy. Uh, I do not expect you to, you know, for example, know like, you know, Hatu and Runa are commoners. I mean, we're not going to get that specific. Okay? Uh, but note who's on top. Sapa Inca. Yeah, the Sapa Inca, which means what again? Emperor. Emperor. Means what again? Uh, not hearing a lot of he is what? Emperor. 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 Okay. He is the descendant of the sun, which is pretty cool. Alright. So on this slide, Inca life, I did want to show you a brief clip of or a couple instances of what it meant to be an actual Inca citizen on the ground. Okay, what I'd like you to do here is I'd like you to pick two characteristics and write down a short description of them. Okay, so if you want to say record keeping and that you made clothing, and then give me a description of what that's like. Okay, go ahead and do that on your notes.